Hey everybody, Pat B here again. This is May 2nd, 2020, Saturday night. And uh, last night I um, had uh, documented my first cruise ship contract, which was the inaugural voyage of the Royal Caribbean Majesty of the Seas ship. This would have been March of 92. Um, I did four ships. Uh, one, my longest contract, even though as far as contracts go, wasn't certainly many guys have done longer contracts than that, but mine was three months. And then I did, I played on three other ships and they were more like specialty cruises. So lucky for me, I didn't, uh, I didn't end up having to do any, you know, three to six months or something like that on the other ones. And a lot of times that's what the cruise lines are looking for. Anywhere between three and six months. The longer, the better, really. So if you if they if you can do six months, they prefer that, so they don't have to keep uh, switching out people. But I had to cut it short because of some um, commitments back here, and then um, yeah, some gigs that I really wanted to do. So that was discussed ahead of time and agreed upon for my contract. So anyway. Um, yeah, so this next part, I call this cruise ship stuff part two, I guess. And as I mentioned, there was a, a, a celebrity component to this. So now this is, um, I believe this will be about 1998, um, where the, when this happened in February. I remember February, I make mention of this in this uh, posting that I did on Facebook in, on March 27th. I remember it. February here in Calgary and the morning I woke up to fly out to Fort Lauderdale, it was minus 38 Celsius without wind chill. Um, I remember that my car wouldn't start. So I had to call my dad to come pick me up to take me to the airport because by the time I would get, you know, roadside assistance, AMA or something to come and boost my car, I would have been much later than I, you know, would want to be. So, so anyway, yeah. Um, minus 38 without windshield, like, yeah, what? Anyway, it does happen. So it happened that day. And I was to fly Calgary to Chicago O'Hare and then Chicago to, um, Fort Lauderdale with two, uh, musician friends, colleagues from here, uh, Lincoln Fry on saxophone and clarinet. And a gentleman who lived here, very good trumpet player and great guy, Dan Johnson uh, is his name. Uh, he lived here, but uh, has lived in Las Vegas now for quite a while. And he's still there, as a matter of fact. But uh, the three of us were to fly down together. <clears throat> and this was kind of a specialty cruise booked by, if you remember me making reference to uh, a fellow by the name of Jim D'Amico, uh, who was one of the guys that helped book the musicians on Royal Caribbean when I was doing that inaugural in March of 1992. The main guy, the main guy was a, a fellow by the name of Rob Waterfield. Jim D'Amico was kind of his assistant or right-hand man. They kind of worked those things together. And uh, so Jim um, broke off from RCCL and he worked, I think, for Carnival as well. And I think one more. Right now, he still lives in Miami. He's got his own company called Punch Entertainment, and he books for cruise ships and um, for five-star hotels and resorts. I think primarily in Asia, but probably other parts of the world too. But So anyway, Jim booked me on this uh, particular uh, jaunt, shall we say, with Lincoln Fry and Dan Johnson. We were to fly from Calgary, like I say, Calgary to Fort Lauderdale. We were to jump on uh, the Costa Victoria, and uh, we were to be on the Costa Victoria for a few days uh, to play a show uh, for a singer-comedian named Scott Record. Now, I posted something a long, long, long time ago, a number of weeks ago on here, with Scott Record doing um, a version of New York, New York, which that it would sound like if it were still in a Wurlitzer um, jukebox and the record was skipping. I'll put a link to that um, down below with my uh, YouTube uh, email address, whatever. And um, funny enough, it's a recording of him doing that with the Majesty of the Seas Orchestra on the ship that I did the inaugural, but it was after I had left. So I wasn't part of that. 
And, uh, so I'll put a, a link down there and, uh, I'm going to, having laid all that groundwork, um, what happened after the Victoria, Costa Victoria was that after a couple of days, we were to, the three of us were to disembark in Cozumel, Mexico, which we did. We flew back to Miami from Cozumel, spent a few hours in the Miami airport, and then hopped a flight to San Juan, Puerto Rico, uh, to meet the Costa Romantica, to jump on and to, um, uh, hop on with the band there. There was a medical emergency on the ship. So the ship had to, um, had to, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Holy crap. Had to change its course. Let's put it that way to, uh, St. Thomas instead, Charlotte Amali, St. Thomas. So, um, we ended up flying into San Juan and just overnighting and then hopping a flight to St. Thomas the next day. 63 nautical miles. So it made me think, you know, these cruise ships that go from San Juan to St. Thomas, I know what they do. They, they leave San Juan and they go out into the Caribbean Sea and do donuts all night or figure eights. And then, uh, as it gets closer to morning, they'll sail their way into St. Thomas. Cause I looked at my uh, plane ticket said 63 nautical miles. I thought, yeah, that's not going to take all night to sail 63 miles on a ship like this. Are you kidding? Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Here's the story as it was posted March 27th on Faceplant. In February of 1998, if my memory serves me correctly, and it doesn't always, I found myself down in the Caribbean moving between two ships with two fellow bandmates from Calgary, Lincoln Fry on saxophone and Dan Johnson on trumpet. We had just finished playing some shows on the Costa Victoria. The ship docked in Cozumel, Mexico, which is where we hopped off. We hopped a flight back to Miami, then hopped another flight to Luis Munoz Marin, International Airport. I always thought that was a cool name. In San Juan, Puerto Rico. We were sent there with the intention of joining the band that was already on the Costa Romantica. But after we had arrived, we were notified that there was a medical emergency and the ship had to divert, there's the word I was looking for, to St. Thomas. And we were to overnight in San Juan and then hop another flight to St. Thomas the next morning and board the ship there. Upon arrival at Luis Munoz Marin, International, we piled into a van to be driven to our hotel, but the driver said we are still waiting for one more passenger to arrive at the van. After about a five to ten minute wait, the driver, waiting beside the door of the van, says, okay, here he is, and the only open seat left in the van is beside me. So all of a sudden, this body gets in beside me, and it's Pete Barbeauty. He apologizes for the delay in getting there, the van driver shuts the door, and Pete begins to start telling jokes pretty much all the way to the hotel. He was freaking hilarious. Uh, fast forward about eight or so years from there, I was part of the Calgary Stampede Grandstand Show Orchestra for about 17 years in total. And about eight years after Puerto Rico, guess who ends up being one of the Grandstand Show headliners? I refreshed his memory as to our first meeting in San Juan and our time on the Costa Romantica, and then he proceeded to tell me more jokes. <laughs> I guess you can never laugh enough, can you? And then I put a, uh, a video, which I will copy the link, a YouTube video, to Pete uh, on The Tonight Show, Johnny Carson's Tonight Show. And uh, I say here, here's a quick segment of Pete on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson from years gone by. And then I say, oh, and speaking of The Tonight Show, I feel another story posting coming on, but later. And that's the one I mentioned about what, on the Dorsey tour that we got into NBC in Burbank to see The Tonight Show band. John Bambridge Jr. got us and Sr. got us in. And then after that, I put, P.S., I also remember, and I kind of explained a little bit of this. I also remember that the morning we flew out of Calgary, it was minus 38 Celsius without wind chill. <sighs> I hate that thought. When our plane was backed out of the gate, yes, this, <laughs> now that I brought this up again, when our plane was backed out of the gate, we de-iced, but continued to sit there for about another 90 plus minutes. At one point, the captain's voice came over the loudspeaker and said, we had to wait for the sun to come up because the de-icing fluid was freezing. What the hell does that tell you? Damn. We had a connection to catch in Chicago O'Hare, which we missed, we got booked on another flight out of O'Hare, and by the time we got to Fort Lauderdale, 
to meet the ship, it was plus 30 Celsius, which I think is about 82 or 83 Fahrenheit for my American friends. What a difference a day made, 24 little hours. Not even, actually. Yeah, talk about um, opposite ends of the spectrum. Minus 38 Celsius to plus 30 Celsius. And I remember getting to O'Hare. We pulled in and we had mere minutes to make our connection. And I don't know if you've, those of you that have flown into O'Hare before, it's not just a, a dinky little airport. Let's put it that way. And it re, with us flying through the airport, it reminded me of those old OJ Simpson commercials for Samsonite where he's jumping over the luggage carts or whatever. Man, we, we were the last three to get there and they were waiting for us. So we just got on. It's, uh, yeah, that was nuts. But anyway, it was nice to get to Fort Lauderdale, some warm climates, and uh, and to just ah, decompress, get on the boat and relax. So I will send, I will send, I will post uh, a link to Scott Record doing New York, New York, as it would be in a Wurlitzer um, jukebox that was really old and, and the track was skipping. And it was it was written that way. It was brilliant how it was written. And I remember, and I posted this and Scott responded because he's a Facebook friend of mine. And I said, I remember the rehearsal. I played probably five or six notes in the rehearsal. And after that, I could not stop laughing. I didn't play the whole rest of the chart because I couldn't stop laughing. I'm, I was like, tears were streaming down my face. My guts hurt. I couldn't even play. I couldn't. I was laughing so hard I couldn't put the mouthpiece in my mouth properly. It was banging against my teeth and all that stuff because I was just howling. And I, I didn't play the rest of the chart. I played six notes. So anyway, I just made sure to take a look at it later because, I, yeah, I just, anyway, I guess I was just in one of those moods. But check it out. It's pretty brilliant the way it's been, the way it's been arranged and the way it's been orchestrated, how it sounds. And then I will also, um, I'll also put, up a YouTube link to this Pete Bar Beauty video that I posted. It's him with some of the Tonight Show band guys uh, playing a version of Chicago. You know, Chicago, Chicago, that toddle in town, ba 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 doo da. You know that one. Yeah. Anyway, so that's that story. And that's uh, that was my second and third ship kind of rolled into one. The fourth ship. Oh, and I might have a photo of the band up up in a different room here. The fourth ship the, uh, was called the MSC Lyrica and uh, Mediterranean Shipping Company, one of the largest shipping companies in the world, went into, cruise, went into the cruise ship business. And I mentioned this in one of my last videos. I think that when I ended up getting called and Jim D'Amico called me for this gig, um, again out of Fort Lauderdale, um, they had about seven ships, I think, in their fleet. And... Um, that one was about 13 days or 14 days. And it was in a big band. I played Barry. And it was a big band led by drummer Lester Merle, who used to play with Harry James in the later part of Harry's career. And um, yeah, it was a big band. We played dance sets from 9 p.m. to 12 a.m. I think out of the 13 or 14 days, we played eight or nine. And the rest of the time was our own. It was a wonderful, sweet, sweet gig. Thank you, Jim D'Amico. And apparently I was subbing for um, Barry saxophonist Mike Brignola. Um, funny enough, uh, with the last name of Brignola playing Barry sax, no relation to Nick. I remember seeing the Woody Herman Band here in Calgary in 1986 at the Jack Singer Concert Hall was the venue. And I remember hopping up on stage when Mike came out to put his horn away. And I was picking his brain a little bit. And... Um, he was telling me about the gigs he had coming up and when they were, they were going down the West coast from Vancouver down to San Francisco, when they get to San Francisco, they're recording an album. And that album turned out to be one of my favorite Woody Herman live albums. Um, it's the 50th anniversary album recorded at the great American music hall in San Francisco. I think it's great. And, um, that was two weeks after they played here. But anyway, I was subbing for Mike. Mike also played with Maynard, I believe too. And, um, he's based in Miami. So he, he was probably out with Herman's band or something because it's still going. Frank Tiberi, the tenor player that was with Woody Herman for a long time, he took the band over and I, I, as far as I know, still leading it. 
So I was subbing for Mike Brignola and we had, um, some pretty cool guys on there. I remember, um, um, Jay Corey was playing lead tenor. He was on Buddy Rich's band. He was also on the album, Big Swing Face, which is one of the Buddy Rich albums I really like. Uh, he was playing first tenor on our band. He reminded me of Joe Pesci. He was a tiny little guy and walked around with a little teacup and, you know, he's, he's like a teddy bear that, uh, you know, that you'd, uh, want to take home with you. Sweet guy. And Dennis Node played lead trumpet for us. He played uh, trumpet, uh, I think one of the lead parts with Maynard for a few years. Our lead trombone was a fellow by the name of Rick Stepton, who played uh, in Bu- on Buddy's band as well, as well as Blood, Sweat, and Tears. He had the greatest email address for a trombone player. It was testosterbone at AOL.com. <laughs> I don't know if he still has it, but I thought that was pretty cool. That was a good one. Another guy sat next to a tenor player uh, by the name of Scott Mullet. Interesting guy, just a mother tenor player. And um, oh, I can't, I'd have to go and look at the picture again to remember some of the other ones, but a lot of great people on that, on that show or that uh, cruise. So anyway, uh, that was that. So that was the fourth ship. I don't have any, um, I don't have anything to, any links to put for that, but I'm sure I have never YouTube Les de Merle, but I'm sure there's probably something on there. Um, yeah, quite a good drummer. Um, kind of in this, uh, the style of, uh, like a Buddy Rich or Gene Krupa kind of thing. Although he did have a fusion group called Transfusion apparently too. Don't know much about them though. Anyway. So yeah, that's, uh, those are my cruise ship, uh, experiences. I've also gone on one as a passenger. It's a whole different, way different, um, being a passenger than it is to be, um, an employee. But anyway, um, interesting, interesting. So that's that, uh, look for those links for the Pete Bar Beauty thing on the Tonight Show band and also for Scott Record doing New York, New York, like it was in a skipping Wurlitzer jukebox. Okay. That's about it for tonight. Thanks folks for, uh, stopping by to check this out. Um, hope you're enjoying hearing these stories or, you know, I'm the main thing for me is that I'm just documenting these things. I was writing them out on Facebook and people were, th- were saying to me that I should put a book together. I don't know. That's a lot of typing. Maybe I should just cut and paste these things and throw them onto something. I don't know. But one thing I did want to do was to video document them. So that's why I'm doing this. It, uh, yeah. So that's why it's happening. So hope you're digging it. Um, I just want to get these down before I start forgetting even more details and I don't want to do that. So, okay. Take care now. And thanks for hanging out with me for these last 17, 18 minutes and hope you're all doing well. Have a great night. Cheers.